The podcast universe has exploded with amazing content for everyone to listen to. And there are so many incredible shows with just not enough time to listen to all of them. So if you're asking yourself, what do I listen to? The answer is real simple. Thrive Loud is the must-listen-to, can't-miss-an-episode, gotta-hear-what's-next, most fun, energizing, and inspiring podcast show you'll ever encounter. With hundreds of episodes of guests ranging from CEOs, entrepreneurs, innovators, thought leaders, inspiring speakers to amazing humans, Thrive Loud is the real deal. Listen in as Lou Diamond decodes what makes incredible people thrive. If you're a regular listener, you already know this. And if this is your first time listening, get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome everyone to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have the founder and online marketer at SEO Symbiosis. Fueled by her experience in technology and work in marketing research for organizations like YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google, she developed a foundation in consumer psychology and how to market products and services in a manner that resonates with a specific audience. Not only does she help drive traffic to websites to bring awareness to her clients' businesses, but she also focuses on communicating value. Thrive Lab listeners, Jennifer Yan. Jennifer, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing awesome. Thank you for having me on your show. Jennifer, I want to make it clear that this episode that we communicated and we sent out to everybody, we made sure had all the right SEO information so that people would find you, me, the podcast, your business, everything, so that everyone would know how to do it. Sound like a good plan? So everyone could come to this point saying, wow, how did I get here? (laughs) Yes, I'm definitely here to dispel some of the black magic behind SEO. So let's do that. I want to make this kind of like a working session here so we can understand, I guess maybe, let's start off with the busier focus of this. How did this become your main focus with all the work that you were doing that you dove into this avenue of dealing with technology and and customer relations? Oh, yeah. So basically, I actually started off as a software engineer. So a lot of like technical background. So learning how to create websites and kind of like make it functional just so that it work. Um, I have my technical background in software engineering. And during the time where I was interviewing for software engineering interviews, I was looking up, um, I was booked on some gigs with um, Google, LinkedIn, Adobe, and they were looking for people to help with their marketing. So I got that technical background and added marketing to the mix. And so through these interviews, I really like um, working with these companies and just giving them feedback on how do they improve their products and services. So this mix of marketing and tech is actually how I learned about SEO and how to drive traffic to websites through search engines. All right, let's go through some basic things. We've been going through search engines and SEO for, I don't want to say a long time now, but certainly we're not in the the rookie years of this happening. It's been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. What's changed the most since people started recognizing that you could optimize search engines to where we are today? Oh, yes. Um, Definitely in terms of ranking your website, um, Google is onto those individuals that are trying to hack their ranking system and trying to kind of like beat everyone to the race because um, there's something called um, black hat SEO, which Mm -hmm. a lot of people are trying to do. So um, people are trying to um, stuff keywords into their content um, and also pay for links for high authority sites to link to their website to improve their rankings. So Google definitely is changing the way they rank by those people trying to um, kind of cheat the system. And well, but, but is it cheating the system? I mean, look, they built the system. <laughs> <laughs> what I like to compare it to is kind of like, let's say if you were to break the law, right? Mm-hmm. Technically, it's only illegal if you get caught, right? So it kind of like, 
is similar to Google's ranking system. So um, there's things that you could kind of like do to your website that you, you could maybe increase traffic. But the thing is, you might have you might be looking over your back to see if Google might take off your website from their entire search engines. So there's that risk that you take when doing that. Okay. So, so hold on. If you have a business and you have a website and, and let, let's talk about it just as your website, I don't want to focus on what's going on inside the fiefdoms of maybe Facebook or LinkedIn or the algorithms you're dealing with within those worlds. But let's say you're specific Facebook and you're dealing with SEO, not Facebook, um, search engines on trying to drive people to your website. The Google's still the most common search engine. <laughs> There's um, where people go to find things. If you've spent time, money, and research on figuring out what the key words are um, to try to grab the attention and, and get up to where you're supposed to be, isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? Or my guess, my point is, I'm not looking at it like there's people that are like hacking through the system. I want to understand to someone who has a business today, what are the best practices that they should be thinking about for SEO that you help them with so that they can figure out, okay, what are some of the baby steps I need to be doing so that people can find me in this crazy complex world? Oh, yes. Um, SEO definitely could be a crazy complex world. Um, What I advise people that are starting with SEO or... um, sorry, search engine optimization is just a way to drive traffic through search engines to your website. And I would say the number one most important thing that Google is trying to figure out is how valuable is your website according to what that website visitor is typing into that Google search bar. And the thing is, if they're staying on your website for a very long time, um, let's say like 10 minutes on your website, that's a huge indicator to Google that this is a very good website according to what the user is typing to the search bar. So they're more likely to put you on page one towards the top, which if you're past page one, no one looks there to actually, um, or maybe very few people look past page one of Google to actually find what they're looking for. So that's a huge part of it. Got it. What I was, so, so that's your first step is all those components of this. What do you think is the biggest, what is the thing that companies are not doing before they approach you? When they come to the first thing that you see, like you say, okay, what are you doing to drive traffic to your business? What's the number one thing that they're not doing that they should be doing? Um, I would say step one is, actually there's two things I could think of. Number one, especially if you have a brand new website, you want to make sure that Google can find your website. So um, I was surprised when I first created my website, Google didn't immediately pick it up. And so um, a way to check if Google can even index your website is to go into your Google search bar, type in site, S-I-T-E colon, and then your website. And then you'll see all the pages that Google can index throughout your website. If you're not showing up there, that means Google cannot mean crawl your website yet. So I'm doing that as we speak, Thrive Loud listeners. And I'm I'm glad to know that Thrive Loud shows up all over the place here. I feel very good. Oh, awesome. (laughs) Awesome. So step one is done. Um, Step two is kind of like the bread and butter of actually really good marketing is to actually understand who's your target demographic. And basically, um, not only describing their pains, but their pain points in the language that they would use. So um, a lot of people just skip this and then they're just looking for keywords. Mm -hmm. But then they're not thinking of that potential client and where they are on that buyer's journey. Are they just finding out about you? Are they ready to buy? Or are they somewhere in the middle where, you know, they're looking for... um, questions to um, answers to their pain points or questions. So basically those are like the two crucial steps that people need to understand to do before they start any type of SEO campaign. All right. I like it. So here's a good question. Let's talk about the other types of places that you are at uh, for a long period of time. I think if I might be right on this, 
a site like Facebook, people are on Facebook for something close to an hour a day. I think it's 53 minutes on average, I think was the most recent stat on this. So talk about how you're helping, how people can better optimize themselves because a lot of people's businesses are in social media sites. Um, they do articles on LinkedIn, they do stuff in, um, in Facebook. How can you better market yourself maybe inside and outside those fiefdoms so that people can find your businesses within those social media platforms? I actually, I love repurposing content. <laughs> it's like, if I don't have to reinvent the wheel, I sometimes use, um, sometimes I could publish a blog on my website or even a podcast. You could transcribe this podcast and add SEO keywords. And you could also be omnipresent to your target clientele. So you could take content from a podcast or website and also put it on your social media sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, and just kind of meet your client wherever they may be. They might find you through social media. They might find you through your podcast or through your website. So since you don't know where they could, where they'll actually end up finding you, it's great to kind of repurpose this content and have it all over the place so you could find them where they are. I love this. And I'll let you know, <laughs> this is kind of funny that I ended up writing a blog that I ended up putting on the Thrive Loud website uh, and also repurposed it and put it within LinkedIn and was been playing around with different ways of maybe putting people um, links in and out of those social media forums. So from your experience, there's a lot of work to do, right? There's a lot of places and a lot of content being created all the time and making sure that you're optimizing yourself so that people can find this content is really challenging. How can people get a hold of it when we're constantly creating content, we're constantly putting new things out there? Where should we be prioritizing doing that SEO work? Is it before we start creating the content or after it's out there or something that we can do continually to make sure that we're optimizing what we have? I would say I'm a huge fan of actually pre-planning with SEO. So with any type of content, um, I'm just saying content in a general sense, right? So this could be a blog post. This could be a podcast. uh, Whatever type of content you might have. Um, I'm a huge fan of um, doing something called keyword research. So that's just the process of Um, looking at my target audience. Sometimes I'm looking through online forums where they hang out and then I'm looking at the keywords that they're using. And also I'm looking for maybe like keywords that might have a lot of um, search volume, but Mm -hmm. low competition keywords. So I'm trying to find these keywords and they become the basis of my content. Whenever I want to create content that has SEO power behind it and so when all this is done I have SEO keywords the content Um, later on uh, what I do after that is I try to find influencers or other bloggers that could go and promote this content or even other podcasters where I could give even more power to um, bring uh, this content to audiences that may not have heard it on my website, but maybe I could like maybe appear on your website on your podcast and then I get access to another audience that I might not regularly get access to. So I want to ask this question and this has to do with you as the entrepreneur, you started working on these different projects and realized that there was a great opportunity with your expertise to, to run this company. How has it been running this business of your own? Um, I would say first time, like when I first started this business, um, I was a lot like other entrepreneurs. Um, for one, I knew I needed to grow it and I needed to do marketing. And so for me, I would say like the biggest, um, the thing that's contributed the most to my success is actually creating a network of of people to kind of like either maybe you could, they could help with funding with a company or they could give you the knowledge or expertise that you don't already have. And when I started my business, I, I didn't know SEO. 
So I did a whole bunch of research online. I talked to other people in the field and running it, running this business for me has been, um, it has been really in terms of the way I grew personally and professionally, it's really pushed me to my limits. And um, I, I learn something new every single day. And it's a lot like having a baby sometimes. It takes <laughs> all your time, all your money. And um, sometimes it could be a huge learning curve. But as you get better and better, you kind of like get the ins and out and everything. And you're talking to people that have been maybe entrepreneurs entrepreneurs for decades and so when you talk to these people maybe you could um shortcut this learning curve that you have as a business owner jennifer do you or your clients have better search engine optimization (laughs) meaning does your business in meiosis have an excellent seo process or are your clients a little bit better because you're focused so much on helping them deliver those solutions (laughs) Are you drinking your own Kool-Aid? Oh, yeah. So right now, I'm the solo founder, so I don't have a co-founder. So I have people that I partner with, but right now, it has been mainly my clients. And with my clients, um, I actually got them uh, ranked for a very competitive keyword, um, it was best business lawyer in San Francisco. Okay. And some keywords are actually more competitive than others because a lot of business lawyers are going after that keyword because they know people are going to search that in the Google search bar. So we definitely um, got results through, through my clients and I'm definitely looking to um, revamp my site and <laughs> add even more, um, I know what to do, but I'm really good at doing it for my clients. And then we gotten results through my clients. Um, right now, I'm working on other ways to also straighten, strengthen the marketing to my website. It's kind of funny, right? The, the big joke is, you know, the sharpest knife can't shave its own handle. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's some of the challenges that entrepreneurs have. And, I, and trust me, some of the best consultants and marketers out there, you'll go to their own sites and be like, that's, that isn't so great. And, and that's okay. I actually find that to be a big compliment because that means they're so busy working on their client sites. And if their clients are doing the work they need to, that's great. Jennifer, oh, yes. in, in, in this all-consuming, time-consuming, money-consuming activity of running a business, on those days that you're not kicking on all cylinders when you're not thriving, Who or what practice do you seek to get yourself back on the thriving track? Hmm, To get on the thriving track. So we're talking professionally, right? Or personally. It could be whatever it is that you need to do to get yourself back in gear. I would say in order for me to get myself back onto gear, I usually like doing downtime. Okay. And downtime is just like spending time with friends and family. Um, I also uh, actually joined Rover also. So I walk dogs in my free time. <laughs> okay, so that's nice. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, and basically that downtime allows me to keep thriving. And actually some of my best business ideas have come up while I'm walking a dog or when I'm having actually downtime where I could actually reflect on, on my business. With, uh, with that, and this is a good question for you, I guess, where, where do you live right now? What, what part of the world do you live in? I'm in San Francisco. San Francisco. That's a lot of hills to do a lot of dog walking. That can give you, it's good to oh, good yeah. work out for your calves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with that and, and figuring, figuring that stuff out, what's your vision because the world is constantly changing. There's all these new marketing challenges and there's all these, so much competition in a crowded space that everybody's fighting for the limited places there. What are you trying to do for your clients and what are you thinking about for your business as you're looking forward for, we're recording this in early 2020, as you're looking forward to see what your business can be and what you can do for your clients that's going to make your business super spectacular. Right now, I would say the direction that I'm trying to take with my company and the direction I'm trying to take with my clients' businesses is to actually um, find a way to just 
get off the ground and get to the point where we could actually have recurring um, scalable income through um, multiple products and services that we could offer down the line. Because I feel like the ultimate test of a business is to maybe step away for a month and see if it would collapse or not. (laughs) If it doesn't collapse, you have a good system of managing the incoming leads and also having the day-to-day work done for you. And so this is the direction that, you know, we're trying to take. And basically um, you spend a lot of time building up your business, but at the end of the day, I think everyone wants to spend time with their friends and family and actually have that good personal time away from their business because um, I don't really feel like what's the use of it. You get, all this money, but then you can't really spend it the way you want, (laughs) spend the time that you want um, and just enjoy your life. I I call the month I step away from the business August. So oh yeah, (laughs) pick pick a time to go through that. Let's do this right now. Let's take the admin part of the show here. If you could, Jennifer, share with the listeners, this is going to be fun. All the places people can find you, websites, URLs, social media, and stuff like that. We'll put it all in the show notes and hopefully we'll use the right SEO so that people can find you as well. And I also want to hear what are the key keywords that you use for your business? So give the admin part first and then we want to know what should we be, what we should be searching on to make sure we find you. Oh yes. Um, So right now I'm offering a free SEO makeover of people's uh, websites and I'm helping them drive more traffic to them and, You know, for those people that um, just SEO is just like so complicated for them. I break it down really easily. So um, they could book a 30-minute SEO makeover session with me directly with my Calendly link. So calendly.com forward slash gen hyphen 90. And the 90 is the number. So through this link, you could book a direct time with me and then we'll go together and go over your website and see what can we do SEO wise to kind of boost the traffic and also increase um, the marketing strength on your business website. So Thrive Loud listeners, I'm beating you to the punch. I'm doing this too. I am absolutely doing (laughs) this for my site because we have so much stuff on it and so many things and podcasts and marketing and myself and all those things. I, I'm, I'm doing this where I'm lining up. So very cool. Um, what, are the, what social handles and website can we find you directly to from a marketing perspective? Um, so I, I'm on social. Um, I don't have the handles, the social media handles on me, but if you type in my full name, Jennifer Yen, LinkedIn, or Jennifer Yen, Facebook, um, you guys could connect with me there. I also have my email, Jen, J-E-N, at S-E-O, symbiosis, S-Y-M-B-I-O-S-I-S dot com. And you could get a contact of me there as well. I like going straight to the source, you know, jumping ahead of everything. Um, Jennifer, I'm not letting you off the hook on this. So what would be the SEO words for me to identify your company? What, what are the keyword searches that we could use that some that you use to direct people to you. Oh yes, I right now I um, basically I need to check out my website. <laughs> I know my client <laughs> websites are doing well because I'm running SEO keyword reports on them. Um, right now, um, I'm not sure which words. I know there's a whole bunch. There's a few of them, but. I I don't know right off the top of my head which words I'm used to um, get found on Google right now, but... (laughs) But we'll put it in the show notes, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes, and then, um, yeah, it's a really interesting way. It's The thing is, um, when you want to find out which keywords your website ranks for, it's not really as straightforward. Um, Right now, the only, like actual ways to manually type in the keywords you want to get ranked for and double check it through there Mm. to manually do it. And um, yeah, it's definitely SEO is um, a complicated beast, but 
uh, yeah, I love, we'll have I, love in the that, show I love that I stumped you. I'm sorry. That's the yeah. best ever. <laughs> I'm letting the listeners know here. I, I, you know, I was just basically thinking maybe this is going to look, I'm sure SEO and, and consulting company and stuff like that is all there. And I'm sure there's other ones too, but it'd be really interesting. <laughs> I just think you probably have a lot of them and it's probably hard to decode, but you're going to send that to me and we're going to put it in the show notes. And I think that'll be fun. So our listeners oh, yeah. can go check that out. That'd be awesome. Let's head, down, let's head down fun street, Jennifer. You've been such a sport here. I've been such a pain in the ass. I know. <laughs> conversation. Okay. So Jennifer, let's, Hit the standard uh, Thrive Loud question here. What's your all-time favorite movie? It has to be Gone Girl. Okay. Why does that movie connect with you? <laughs> That's an interesting one. It's your favorite. I actually had, before like I was a software engineer, I was actually a criminal justice major. Wow. And so, I don't know that plot. I don't know. Have you seen the movie? Yes, I have. It's like, who the hell would think about that plot? It's like... <laughs> When it's so much, like, there's so many twists in it that, like, no one would have thought that would be the case. It was, like, the standard, like, crime movie, and then there's, like, the missing wife, and then the husband's always blamed because the friends and family are always looked at as the first suspects. But the thing is, it ended in a way that I didn't see, like, off the top of my bed, and I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, incredible plot and so many twists and turns that I didn't see from the beginning. Spoiler alert for our listeners. If you haven't listened, seen the movie, turn your ears away. But the, my spoiler alert thing is this. Would you, if you were the main character, Ben Affleck, I think his character's name was Nick. And when Rosamund Pike, Amy Dunn, Dunn comes back, would you have ever stayed with her at any point in time? Would you, I mean, like, how would you not think that you were going to be dead in a minute? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Something about love makes you do really crazy, stupid things sometimes. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Definitely up there. Okay. So, <laughs> when you're walking the dog, when you're heading out there, when you're doing something to get yourself moving to think about your business or stepping away from it, is there a favorite song that you love to hear that gets you kind of like upbeat and keeps you going and moving forward? I say there's lots of songs that are like. Is there one recently? Something you've been listening to of late? Living on a Prayer, a classic. Bon Jovi. That's a first. Yeah. I'm loving that right now. <laughs> I think, I think, I saw my producers, by the way, because it'll probably play shortly after this episode. Oh, awesome. Uh, my, my last question for you, Jennifer, to wrap, wrap this up. Uh, challenging space, huge need out there, but also real competitive. Why is Jennifer Yan and her symbiosis, SEO Symbiosis Company, the firm that people want to be working with today? At the end of the day, we're marketing to humans, right? And what other companies fail to do is when they do mass pitches on why their website should be linked to or they do hard sells, it just drives people away. So we broke down the secret sauce on what your target audience is searching and the keywords that they're actually using. And right now, we actually added a new service where we're helping actually other people get booked on podcasts. And so we're one of the few SEO and podcast booking agencies that have been mixed together to give you better conversion rates and also gives you the power of that human voice and the ability to share your personal stories so you could get more clients and develop the relationships that you need into your business. Jennifer Yan, it's SEO Symbiosis. This has been a lot of fun. You've been a great sport. I've been plugging you on these questions. You're like, <laughs> where did this interview go, Lou? How did you get me on this Q&A side? I don't know. I just had some fun. I knew you'd be able to handle it. And if worst case scenario, you are going to be filling my show notes with so much information, my users are going to explode. Um, hopefully this was a lot of fun for you today and thank you so much for coming on the program. Oh yeah, thank you so much, Lou. And to all our Thrive Out listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.